Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to test for a block a couple different ways. Um, this isn't really too complex but I will be showing you at the end of the video what you can achieve with the stuff that I'm about to show you in just a second. So um, there's a few things that you will need, and the first thing that you're going to need is an if statement, uh, regardless on the way you're going to be doing this. Um, another thing that you might want if you're testing for multiple things is going to logic operators and selecting the light blue operator and going to an and statement if you want to test for everything, or if you want to test for, say, two things, one or the other, then you would test uh, for that. But if you want all things to be tested, one and another one, then you go and uh, for there. So we're just going to use this as an example. Um, but there is, I'm just going to duplicate that and remove this so you guys can kind of see what other things that you can do with it. All right, so the first example I'm going to show you is a basic way to test for um, two different types of blocks. So actually we should probably test for the first one. So we're just gonna move that like that. So this is a very simple way of testing for a single block in the same coordinates. Um, say we're testing for gold, a gold block in the coordinates of wherever this block is. Um, being right clicked on or whatever uh, way you want to execute it. If it's an update tick, it's still going to test for the exact coordinates of the block that it's being run from to see if it's actually gold. Uh, this wouldn't be used for anything particularly uh, because it's you need to build onto the game rather than use a gold block to test for things. But uh, you can edit the coordinates and add a math operator for y coordinates and say test for y plus one which will test for one block above if it's gold and then you could do something uh, within the coordinates down here so this is basically the condition for your if statement and this is basically the event that happens when you do something so knowing that you can actually do this procedure and duplicate it make it do it check for two different locations. So this will be one block above and this will be one block above the other gold block. And then we can do something as well. So I'll be showing you how I've created something later on in this tutorial um, using this technique here. Um, now if you want to test for error, uh, you can also just select the error icon. And this will just test if there's no block in that position. That will work fine too. And uh, the last thing that I want to show you is something that I came across and I noticed later on after people were asking me why um, seeds for my custom crops wasn't working. And it was because they were using this type of um, testing for blocks. I looked into the code a little bit more and there is a different way about going about it. Uh, this particular way works the best when testing for blocks that aren't added for sub data for say um, uh, data values for um, you know like farmland uh, I'll show you basically what I mean though so if we go in here there is another option that is for blocks and items it just has one equal sign you want to take that logic operator and you want to get a Minecraft component. You're going to put the Minecraft block component right in the first slot rather than having it in the second slot like this. And we're going to test for farmland. As you can see, farmlands over here, there is no wet farmland. So basically what was happening is people were testing for farmland in this using this procedure up here, like this uh, type of condition but it was only testing for dry farmland rather than wet farmland. So basically what you need to do is do this particular thing 
um, we're just going to duplicate this per get block at and go minus one. And this is the procedure we're testing in this, the custom uh, crops tutorial for farmland one block above or below, pardon me. And it's also testing for wet farmland because of the way it's set up. So there is a different way of going about this. This would be handy as well if you're testing for something like uh, wool, for example. Wool has multiple uh, values um, as well as uh, 1 through, I think, like 15. So if you just test it for white wool, it's going to test for any type of wool using the same procedure. Um, if there's there's obviously other blocks, I think sponge is possibly one of them. Um, pretty much anything that you would. There's uh, double states too, so things like stained glass. A lot of this stuff already has um, the uh, any type of stained glass or any stained glass. So there's usually something that you can get a. Uh, Thing, but terracotta doesn't look like there's one so you could use terracotta and this will test for any type of terracotta so that would be a thing but um, outside of that uh, let's just show you how to do a, a example um, I'm just gonna close that procedure I'm gonna open this one that I pre-made and um, this is using a uh, the same procedure uh, to test for air blocks with and statements that second uh, procedure thing that I showed you those are all coordinates to specific block areas for something that I'm going to show you in just a second uh, there's different levels I've built it in such a way that it's testing for each level of this object that I'm creating so there is something like one two three four five, six different levels. So it's testing for error in different coordinates based on the level it is. So as you can see here, there's it's testing for level three, three plus from the block that I'm gonna be executing the procedure from and any relative coordinates that are um, relevant to that block. So then basically what we're doing down here is we're just placing the block for our event, uh, if in the same coordinates that are relative to what is air. So those are all the different air. There's 47 placements in total. So if we go in game, there's something that uh, we can do with this particular thing. I've used this block here to basically went on right clicked to execute this procedure so it's actually it can be used for update ticks as well but the most interesting thing is how it works with um, this particular setup so if we go over say let's go over here so we have our block if we right click on it it actually grows a tree now this is very similar to how Minecraft tests for their their blocks and stuff like that, but there's also ignores leaves as well. So it's it's a little bit different um, how it's set up, but it's very similar. So if we put this block here and we try click right clicking on it, because there's no air in this section here, it won't grow the sapling or say this was a sapling, it won't, won't grow the tree. But if we were to go over here, it will grow the tree because it can actually fit. As you can see, it fits perfectly fine. Um, I'm not gonna actually make this code available for this particular tree just yet. I want to make sure that I can create a proper um, like a template that people can follow to make trees like this but I will probably end up making different types of trees as well this was kind of inspired by some vanilla minecraft trees as you can see it's very similar to one of these trees here um, but it does take quite a bit of time and I want sure want to make sure that uh, people aren't just going to like 
upload the code somewhere else and make sure that uh, or not give credit to uh, myself for actually taking the time to program all this into basically replace every single block so uh, it will be available on my website uh, someday I'm probably gonna make a new page for you know like little projects like this that people can download and change the blocks and stuff for their own mod and um, I just want to throw it out there that I will be probably updating the website a little bit and it will be restricted to members only so if you're not a member on my site already then you might want to consider that pretty soon uh, whenever I get the pages and stuff actually up and going but uh, yeah that's basically what you can do with the procedures just basically grow a tree without destroying any other blocks in the way and stuff so uh, it also works with other things like that as you can see it won't grow if it's too near the tree but it will grow if it can fit there so anyhow I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial uh, if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below um, definitely check out the channel that suggested the um, how to test the actual blocks and stuff. Um, it was a great suggestion. I wasn't originally going to actually do the idea because it's pretty straightforward, but I figured I could throw a whole bunch of other information in there as well. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Uh, like the video if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.